Source Bank and O'Rourke's Public House at Eddy Street Commons. Now, let's visit with the Hall of Famers. Hall of Fame basketball coach Muffet McGraw and Hall of Fame broadcaster and your host, Bob Nagel. Hey, good evening and welcome to O'Rourke's Public House, home of the Muffet McGraw Show. And we're here at Eddy Street Commons. If you're in the area, you want to stop in, you've got time to get some refreshments and uh, some great food and join us here for... Uh, our show, which has a little bit different uh, look to it this uh, night, as we're going to have some trivia questions going on throughout the show. And uh, if you want to participate, if you're listening or watching, you can keep track of yourself there. But we're going to have some nice prizes at the end of the show. And uh, it's uh, just great to be back here at O'Rourke's Public House. And again, our show is brought to you by thetirerack.com. They've got all the winter tires you need. Not that we need them this week, but I'm thinking we might need them sometime before the winter's over. We also want to thank West Bend Insurance and First Source Bank. Our last show was on November 19th, and we were celebrating our first win over a ranked team when we knocked off DePaul. Since then, we've traveled to Canada. We've faced five other ranked teams, have overcome some injuries, and have suffered another. Coach, we'll have a lot to talk about this evening, and uh, it's, uh, it's been quite an uh, adventure already, hasn't it? It really has been, and, and uh, you know it always is, but going out to Vancouver, what a great experience that was. It's beautiful country. It rained every day, but it still was beautiful, and we got to play some great competition. Three ranked teams, uh, two of them got ranked after that tournament. Right. They played so well, and to come out with the trophy that early in the season, I think we're, you know, we're still starting to gel. People think we're a veteran team, but really, w we have a lot of pieces that are still new, with Brianna Turner coming back, never played with Jessica Shepard before. Uh, we've got some of our freshmen, Jordan Nixon, and uh, we've got Michaela Vaughn, who's technically still a freshman, s still, still trying to piece everybody together. And things are going pretty well, but um, I was really happy with the last game. Well, the one thing that's really getting worn out this year is our passports. <laughs> we, uh, we had a great trip in the summer, went up to Vancouver, and it's, it's just been great. Folks, in the show tonight, we'll have a chance to visit with some of our younger players, including sophomore Daniel Patterson and freshman Jordan Nixon. We'll also spend some time with juniors Caitlin Cole, I'm sorry, not Caitlin Cole, Nicole Benz is with us, a sophomore. And Maureen Butler, a junior, will be with us as well. Yeah. We'll have some trivia questions tonight. We'll give you a chance to win prizes. We'll take some questions for Coach McGraw. And please don't ask her what she's getting Matt for Christmas. That's a big secret. Because <laughs> she hadn't got, <laughs> hadn't got it yet. Well, I started know. looking today. Yeah. I, I really, today was the first day out. I think if you go to the Warren Golf Course, you'll be I find plenty of stuff that Matt wants for Christmas. Definitely. Definitely yeah. going to a golf course. There you go. And uh, we'll get a chance to talk about the games coming up. Uh, around the holidays, including Wednesday night's contest against Western Kentucky. And uh, we will uh, be getting underway with our trivia question. Uh, we asked uh, one question so far, and uh, it's time uh, for us to ask our second question. Everybody get your sheets ready there? All right, here's our second question. Arike Agumboale just crossed over the 2,000 career point mark. How many players at Notre Dame in women's basketball have gone over 2,000 points? All right. Write down that answer, and you'll be... Uh, so you're on your honor out there, right? There's no Googling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No cheating. There's no Googling. No Googling. <laughs> uh, yeah, all those things. Don't do that. Let's have a, a good, fair game, and, uh, and that'll be good. So we've, uh, we've got a uh, break coming up, and then we'll be back to talk with Coach McGraw. Tonight's show, again, brought to you by TireRack.com. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Ben, we like to say the worst brings out our best. So if something bad happens to your home, your car, your boat, motorcycle, or personal possessions, a West Bend home and highway policy will cover it all with one agent, one policy, and one bill. Not to mention one deductible. And if you don't file a claim all year, we'll give you some of your money back. Even your wallet can have a silver lining. To find out more, go to thesilverlining.com. What do I value the most? Shimmering Christmas lights. And I value last-minute sales at JCPenney. It's the final days before Christmas. Take $10 off your $25 purchase with coupon in-store and online. Bundle up with up to 60% off select coats, sweaters, and denim for the whole family. And shine brighter with up to 70% off gold and silver jewelry after coupon. Hurry in to finish all of your holiday shopping. JCPenney, style and value for all. Offers valid 1220 through 1224. Exclusions apply. See store at jcp.com for details. 96 elephants are killed every day in Africa for their eyes. That's 35,000 a year. With your support, more poachers can be caught. With your voice, we can inspire more countries to ban ivory sales and reduce demand. 
Go to 96elephants.org and join more than a million people dedicated to saving Africa's elephants. Protect their home. Take action at 96elephants.org. We know you like football. So do we. We're TireRack.com, and this is our version of a two-minute drill, except it's only 30 seconds. TireRack.com has an enormous selection of tires. Not sure which ones to buy? Use our tire decision guide to find the right tires for your vehicle and the way you drive. Then get them shipped fast and free on all orders over $50. Shipping is in as little as one day. Free. TireRack.com ships to independent, recommended installers. TireRack.com. The way tire buying should be. Touchdown! Live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons, it's the Muffet McGraw Show on Pulse FM. Welcome back, everybody. Good to have you with us and all those folks watching on Fighting Irish Media and Watch ND and on Facebook and listening to us on Pulse FM and all the great crowd here. I tell you what, we get the, the best audience, not only for our home games, but here for the Muffet McGraw Show. So give yourselves a big hand. Thanks for being with us. All right. Two questions out of the way so far in the big trivia contest. We're here with our head coach, uh, Hall of Famer Muffet McGraw. And coach, uh, want to talk about the games since uh, we've been on the air with our show. And certainly the Vancouver trip, as you mentioned, was a fantastic trip. And as it turned out, we thought we were maybe playing a couple of really good opponents. And then maybe, well, we got a chance to play Oregon State again, which, uh, holy cow, number nine ranked team in the country. But it turned out everybody in that tournament we played, we started with Gonzaga. We played Drake, and we played Oregon State, and all three of them wound up being ranked this year. Yeah, I thought Gonzaga was a really good team. They, they had a great game plan for us. We struggled a little bit in that game. Of course, we didn't have Marina Mabry back at that point. Uh, but they, they really played us well. Uh, John Stockton's daughter is on that team. He right. was in the stands, so it was kind of fun to meet him. Um, but it was, a, it was a really good game. It, it was a great start to the tournament for us to play against a team that was going to pack it in and, and force us to shoot from the outside. And they went on to, to play and uh, won the rest of their games after that. And then Drake, of course, upsets South Carolina. Right. So they get ranked. Uh, they're a team that is really difficult to guard. Because when you play teams like the, a lot of the really good mid-major teams, they run such great offense. Uh, they run a lot of five outs. So we had our post players chasing them around on the perimeter, running off flare screens and, and trying to find somebody that um, could get out and guard the three-point shooter. And, and we had so many post players. And in that game, Jessica Shepard doesn't play, and along with Marina Mabry not playing. So uh, Daniel Patterson got the start. Abby Prohaska got the start. So we're, we're looking at some different lineups, and that, that really is helping us, I think, giving us that experience as we move along. And then the, the tournament final came down to us in Oregon State, who's a great team. Uh, we were losing the entire game, as we like to do last year. We were back <laughs> in our habit of getting behind and uh, you know down at the half and, and came back in the third quarter, had a great fourth quarter. Brianna Turner really turned it on. And it was great to see Jackie Young and Arike make the all-tournament team. I think either one of them could have been MVP, and uh, Arike was the one that got it. And we lost uh, Jordan Nixon for that series <coughs> out there. Jordan wasn't able to play. But the good news is we got Marina Mabry back in the last game. It's only played about 18, 19 minutes. But, boy, what a, what a blessing to have her back on the floor. Well, w we were only allowed to play her a few minutes a quarter, and uh, we were very uh, trying, to, trying to really eke that out so we could have her for the end of the game. And, boy, she hit that huge three that was from right in front of our bench. Uh, she likes to shoot those that are about 25 feet out. And uh, huge shots. She had some really big plays in that game. I think out of the 12 teams that were there, I think seven or eight of them were ranked. So the people in Vancouver got a good taste of college basketball. They want us back next year. Yeah, they really did. They had a great crowd out there, too. It was a really yeah. good tournament. They put a, a, a stadium together inside of a convention hall and did a great job. And uh, Debbie Antonelli was uh, the tournament director. So, uh Congratulations to them for uh, all the fun that we had out there. It was really great. Uh, another tough battle with Connecticut this year, Coach, and it's always one of those situations where unless you learn from it, it it's a bad experience. We certainly had a lot that we could learn there. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed that game. <laughs> Actually, I, I heard it didn't go so well for us. But, uh, you know, we, we, we learned a lot from that game, I think, and continue to learn. It's early in the season, and it's important that – we look at everything and take a really hard look at it and a very honest look at it. And we, we really didn't play well the entire game. We didn't come out well. We had a great crowd. We had a lot of energy in the building. And we didn't feed off the energy, which we normally do. Our crowd, they get us going. And uh, we, we just never seem to get in gear in that game. A lot, of, a lot of breakdowns, a lot of mistakes on the defensive side, a lot of things we could improve on. And we watched the film 
and that was probably the worst thing I could think to do to them is make them watch it again. I <laughs> uh, didn't have yeah. the bench watch it. They went through it once. That was enough for them. There you go. But, but uh, you know, we learned from it, and uh, and I think we're going to get better for it. Right. Bounced right back against Toledo. Always uh, a tough opponent, especially they had the third biggest crowd they've ever had in yeah. Toledo to welcome the Fighting Irish there. And uh, you go in, and there's no time on the schedule. How uh, often you play to get your diver done. you got to show up and be ready to play, and I thought we did a pretty good job. Well, I think those two busloads of Irish fans and all the other yeah. Irish fans, the ones that put them over the hump for – they're one of the biggest crowds ever. They have a great atmosphere. It's a terrific place to play. We played in the NCAA tournament there a few years ago. Uh, it's just a great arena. So we, we, we didn't play that well, I didn't think. We, uh, you know, we just really weren't clicking yet. We were really searching still for our identity. And uh, we know we can score. We know we have a lot of really talented players. But are we playing well together? That was the big question. So we went back, took another hard look at the film, uh, learned some more things. And I thought, really put it really well together in the game against Binghamton. Right. We did have one other opponent, and that was finals. That's yeah. always <laughs> a tough time of year. And, uh, again, I, I don't know if people really understand how much time our players spend, especially on a road trip, taking the computers, taking the books, taking everything with them, and taking care of business. And you, you really have to do that, especially the freshmen. Freshman year of studies is tough as anywhere in the country, and uh, everybody did a great job. And, and getting through finals is always a big challenge. Yeah, it, it was really tough. We had a study hall at Toledo. Uh, they, they definitely were working on that. They were studying on the way over, on the way back. Um, and it's, it's important. I mean, they've, they've got to take care of that. We also had a, uh, a home game against Binghamton, uh, one of those teams from the state of New York. And uh, they came in and really excited about playing the Fighting Irish. And I think uh, almost like the championship game in Vancouver, uh, it showed how great shape that our players are in. Because three games in three days in Vancouver, I thought our physical conditioning was the big reason why the second half went our way. And against Binghamton, about halftime, I think they had a pretty good idea that, uh, that they were playing a, a team that was ready to roll and ready to have some fun. Well, we did look like we had fun, finally. And I think that's so important for this team to really enjoy when they're, what they're playing together. Um, they're having a lot of fun. We had 27 assists, which was a season high and probably one of the highest we've ever had. It's, it's an amazing stat for us to have every... You know, 27 baskets were somebody passing it to someone else. And I think that's what we're trying to get to. We are a team that can really move the ball. We can be really unselfish. And I think we have to play that way a little bit more. But it's great to play a team that comes in and really appreciates that they're coming out to Notre Dame. Uh, they're going to tour the campus. They're going to walk around. They're going to really enjoy the experience. They love the crowd. Uh, everything about it, uh, it, it kind of makes you a little bit grateful to know that we do have that kind of crowd that people can come in and, and they can get excited when the green uh, things come out before the game and the lights go out. They're excited about that. And I think there was a point actually in the third quarter where the uh, Big Mac uh, uh, number came up. Still in the third quarter <laughs> and a lot of the people that were there from Binghamton, their fans and some of the family were there and our crowd went crazy like we always do and they looked around like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> These teams coming in, they have no <laughs> no idea what we do here. So it was that was great, and uh, and it was a, a fun time. And uh, when you think about, they're playing tonight up at Marquette. You know, Binghamton had to get right on the bus and get back up there. So we'll get a little bit of a, I guess, a scouting report on, on that game. Yeah, yeah, we we're hoping they they beat them up a little bit, get them ready for the weekend. All righty, we're gonna talk about the upcoming schedule a little bit later in the show. Right now, we want to ask another one of our trivia questions. And, uh, again, we're uh, doing this during the course of the show. Before we go to a break, we've got to ask you trivia question number three. What does Bob Nagel weigh? No. <laughs> <laughs> that question has been asked <laughs> over the years. If somebody writes down a number, I'm coming That's after you. That's a pretty well-kept secret, yeah. though, isn't it, Bob? Oh, yeah, it's a big <laughs> well-kept secret. Here's our third <laughs> trivia question. Both Danielle Patterson and Jordan Nixon were teammates together at which high school in New York? Can you name that high school in New York? That's trivia question number three. And we'll have another question for you in a little bit. And we're going to be back in just a minute. We're going to go to our next segment. We're going to have a couple of our players join us. And we're glad you're with us uh, here at O'Rourke's Public House. Our show brought to you by the TireRack.com. Life doesn't come with a financial roadmap. It does come with a lot of bumps and red lights. Steering clear of those doesn't have to be difficult. With First Source Bank's online money management tools, you can see all your financial accounts, balances, and transactions in one place. So you can easily set monthly budgets to help manage expenses and debt. Get the green light to a successful financial future with First Source's money management tools. First Source Bank, where better is better. Member FDIC. 
At West Bend, we like to say the worst brings out our best. So if something bad happens to your home, your car, your boat, motorcycle, or personal possessions, a West Bend home and highway policy will cover it all with one agent, one policy, and one bill. Not to mention one deductible. And if you don't file a claim all year, we'll give you some of your money back. Even your wallet can have a silver lining. To find out more, go to thesilverlining.com. We know you like football. So do we. We're TireRack.com, and this is our version of a two-minute drill, except it's only 30 seconds. TireRack.com has an enormous selection of tires. Not sure which ones to buy? Use our tire decision guide to find the right tires for your vehicle and the way you drive. Then get them shipped fast and free on all orders over $50. Shipping is in as little as one day, free. TireRack.com ships to independent, recommended installers. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Touchdown! Pulse FM presents Sports Yak, a podcast featuring Corey Mann and Chuck Freebie yakking about sports and faith. I thought Derrick Rose was Jalen Rose, and Jalen Rose was Derrick Rose. <laughs> no wonder I say these people have no clue at all. What in the world? Download, listen, or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and don't miss an episode of The Yak, brought to you by Big and Tall Outlet of Elkhart, or online at bigandtalloutlet.com, because big guys got to look good, too. It's either my way or, or adios, adios amigos. amigos. It's the Muffet McGraw Show with your host, Bob Nagel, on MSFM. Welcome back to O'Rourke's Public House as we get a chance to move along with our uh, segment number three. We're going to be joined now by a couple of our, uh, our players and Coach McGraw's uh, here. Junior walk-on forward Maureen Butler is here from Livonia, Michigan. By the way, the best player we've ever had from Livonia, Michigan. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I think we I think we might have had a couple of hockey players maybe from up that way o- right. over the years. And also joining us, sophomore Nicole Benz, a young lady from Visalia, California, who has worn many hats in her two years <laughs> with the program and has worn them very well. Thank you. And Nicole, Nicole great to have you with us. And uh, and uh, you, I know you're the best player from Visalia as well. And you love the weather here in South Bend, right? Oh, yeah. South Bend winters are definitely something different for me. <laughs> but oh, yeah. Yeah, w- having a white Christmas is always fun. <laughs> Coach, a, a couple special young ladies, you know, uh, when you think about what's gone on the last couple of years and uh, with the injuries and things that split last year and we've had some people out this year, it's amazing the contribution we've gotten from our walk-on players who uh, we don't regard them as walk-ons, they're players. Oh, they really are. I, I don't know what we would have done without either one of them. Uh, Butler has been somebody that has come along and just been such an important member of the team. I, I just l- love the camaraderie of the team and how they feel about you, and I know how excited they are to have you back this year, as we all are. And when you look at our numbers and the, the way people were just going down last year, one after another, it, it, was, it was awesome to have you with us, and we're so glad you're back. So what's your favorite part of practice? That's, that's what I want to know. Hmm. Um, maybe, it, well, all of practice, but, <laughs> I r- <laughs> but one of the... <laughs> Maybe hardest, but also most rewarding is just going hard in the post against some of our post players like Jess and um, Bree. And even though it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of fun and really re- rewarding. You get beat up a little bit. A little too. bit, yeah. <laughs> it's especially when we don't have the guys that practice, which mm-hmm. now that they're gone for the summer, well, not for the summer. Winter. Probably just <laughs> no, for the winter. winter. Just for Christmas. <laughs> just for Christmas break. Yeah, that'd um, be bad. yeah so you're going to be really, really getting a mm-hmm. lot of work down low. Yep. <laughs> Good. What are you looking forward to over the break? Um, uh, a little bit of a break from class. Uh, yeah, it's good to have a breather after finals. That was a lot of studying, a lot of hours in the library, so nice to have a little breather. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is nice. Well, we've got a 4.0 student sitting here with us, Nicole <laughs> Benz. A little bit of pressure for the Scholar Athlete Award, a little bit of pressure to <laughs> keep that team cum up a little bit higher. <laughs> so Doing what I can. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about engineering. That's a pretty complicated Sure, yeah, uh, especially with practice times and everything, trying to work in like labs and study hall and uh, office hours and things like that. But honestly, uh, Notre Dame is a great school, great sports tradition, great academics. It's a great combo of both. Um, and getting to balance the two is something I've always kind of liked to do, even throughout high school. And doing it on a different scale here is also a lot of fun. But I love what I'm studying. I really enjoy it. So, so you must be pretty good in math. Uh, I mean, I love math, um, especially we have some great professors here, and all my classes are super engaging and super interesting. So That's good. So yeah. when, when, you know, I'm not sure how much we're winning by, I can always look down and <laughs> get that answer. <laughs> yeah, you I'll, I'll say sure. I want to see what the, what the field goal percentage is <laughs> the other time she can calculate it in a moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep my arithmetic <laughs> sharp for that. <laughs> what kind of engineering are you inter- interested in uh, I'm studying computer science. So a lot of, like, right now a lot of software programming. So we'll mm-hmm. see where it goes, but yeah. I'm liking it so far. 
So Butler, you're you're about ready to graduate. About yep, last semester coming up. So um, finishing up the few credits that I have left and looking for jobs and the next step. You're gonna have an easy semester next next month. Oh, uh, I don't know how easy easy is, but I just have a few more requirements that I have to take, and then some fun electives that I get to take. So I'm looking forward to those. But what do you think people don't know too much about as a walk on that you could tell them the the exciting exciting things that you get to do with the team? I would say a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, like you were talking about, just like the camaraderie that we have as a team, and I don't know if it's something that like comes through to the fans um, when we're playing the games, just being so focused on what the goal is, uh, but we have a lot of fun too, and being in the locker room with the girls, and even some of like the early morning workouts and um, days off that we get, uh, there's just a lot of fun that we have. Some of that music in the locker room before <laughs> the game, I'm, I'm not sure a lot of those, I don't really, <laughs> not it's not you exactly to, my no. style. <laughs> no. No, so <laughs> is that your choice? Um, I enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> I, like a, I like a wide range of music. <laughs> I guess you got a little brother at Notre Dame. I do, yeah. He's a freshman here. Um, his first year, he's in Siegfried Hall. Really enjoying it. So He comes yeah. to every game? I think just about, yeah. He'll either sit with my parents in the family section or sometimes, I mm -hmm. guess, bring some of his friends and sit in the student section. So. And he wears a shirt. My sister is <laughs> Maureen Butler. I don't know uh, <laughs> if he's that <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I played for the California Dreams, my husband wore a shirt that said, my wife is a dream. <laughs> hey, hey. And it's still true to this day, Bob. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Holy shit. Benz, what's your mom? When your mom saw you play for the first time, how was that? Uh, incredible. They still think the whole thing is just such an incredible opportunity and kind of funny just because I did not think I was going to end up taking this path throughout college, but I'm so glad that it's one I've gotten to go down and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, but yeah, they tune in to every game, whether it's like watching it on TV or on their phones or trying to find like the radio source for it, um, just because they're huge fans of Notre Dame and huge fans of this program uh, now and always. So yeah. And they're searching for Bob Nagel on the radio. Is oh that yes. what they're looking for? Well, they find it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm usually there. I, I, know, I know the crowd wants you to get that three, though. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is something we gotta, we got to get that down. Well, yeah. One of the things about the, uh, these ladies uh, that always amazes me is how unselfish they are. Uh, you know, if you're on a team, you're kind of like walking by the coach once in a while, like, hey, you know, maybe I could, you know, and it's not the issue at all. And uh, the thing about being an important teammate, and you brought this up, is you know where a lot of the players who are on the floor all the time, you know where they live, you know what they need to hear, you know what they want to hear. Uh, sometimes a couple passes get away, and, you know, you know what it's like in post-pass. Somebody deflects a little bit, goes out of bounds, and, and you're right there. And, and, Nicole, you're the same way. I mean, you've been with this program in different capacities. Yeah. Came in as a manager just to be involved with the program and help out. And you're a pretty good player, by the way. And so uh, last year you, you wind up in uniform. <laughs> this year you're willing to do the same uh, gift to the team by being a manager and you're back in uniform. And um, you're just so unselfish. Both of you have a great affinity for being able to recognize what your teammates need and, and give them a little, a little shot in the arm at the right time. Well, you know, Benz was at practice one day um, and she yeah. was – as always, doing a, you know, getting everything ready for practice. And I said, Ben, do you have basketball shoes on? She said, yeah, who needs them? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you do. You're back on the team. <laughs> we're, we're down another player. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, I, I like to quiz the girls during practice, make sure they understand what we're doing. And, and I would say Butler probably gets the, the answer right more than any other. So th these two are, are two of the smartest players. Ben's doesn't even go through things. She doesn't even go through the offenses, and then we put her in the game and expect her to run them all perfectly, and she does. <laughs> um, she's really, really smart. So it's, it's great to have some high IQ players with us. Nicole also does a great job rebounding, by the way, <laughs> skying for rebounds <laughs> on a regular basis. But you, you get a little ability to get some position inside, and, uh, and you do a good job out there. Thanks. Just do what I can to box out. You know, do what we got to do at the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, we've, we've been to uh, some amazing places. Uh, with the trip this summer in Vancouver. I know you both wanted to buy a car when you were up there, but they had a Maserati <laughs> dealership. They had Mercedes-Benz. De they didn't have uh, many Chevy dealerships up there. That's quite a, quite a place. What was your reaction to Vancouver? Oh, it was so beautiful. The city itself was awesome, and right where we were downtown with so many cool shops, and like you were talking about the different stores, but... They didn't have any stores around the hotel. <laughs> Not at all, no. But I told my <laughs> wife, <laughs> Gucci, <laughs> holy cow. Um, yeah, the city was beautiful, but uh, even just all the natural, uh, like the landscape and the mountains in the distance, it was really, really beautiful. And right where we were playing, um, you could look over the water and the mountains and the city, and it 
very pretty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ben's, of course, a last minute addition to the <laughs> trip. So why don't you tell us about getting sure. your passport? <laughs> um, yeah, it was kind of a last <laughs> minute uh, realizing that I, you know, um, I was going to be going to Vancouver, which is, was an awesome opportunity. Um, and I'd never been out of the country, so I had to get my passport. We had to go. Um, Charlotte and I actually went to uh, Chicago, I think, the Friday before we left. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we got my passport, like, uh, rushed and got it all done in that day and came back and ready to go. <laughs> but, yeah, it was definitely a fast turnaround, but exciting opportunity for sure. It was. Charlotte yeah. saves the day. Oh, yes. Again. <laughs> Again. He does that a lot. Ladies, we uh, appreciate you being with us. we got to take another break. And before we do that, guess what? It's time for another trivia contest. Another trivia question. I hope you're writing these down. I'm one for three so far. Are you? How are you guys doing? Well, here's a true or false one for you, Coach. True or false <laughs> question, everybody. Maureen Butler was a manager with the softball team before joining the women's hoop team. Hmm. True or false? Don't say a word. I don't know. All right. That's our uh, question number four. We'll have uh, another question coming up, and then we'll even have a tiebreaker if we need it, so we'll see how that goes. But we're going to take a break. When we come back. We'll visit with a couple more of our players. You're listening to the Muffin McGraw Show from O'Rourke's Public House, brought to you by thetirerack.com. What do I value the most? Shimmering Christmas lights. And I value last-minute sales at JCPenney. It's the final days before Christmas. Take $10 off your $25 purchase with coupon in-store and online. Bundle up with up to 60% off select coats, sweaters, and denim for the whole family. And shine brighter with up to 70% off gold and silver jewelry after coupon. Hurry in to finish all of your holiday shopping. JCPenney, style and value for all. Offers valid 1220 through 1224. Exclusions apply. See store at jcp.com for details. 96 elephants are killed every day in Africa for their Ivory. That's 35,000 a year. With your support, more poachers can be caught. With your voice, we can inspire more countries to ban ivory sales and reduce demand. Go to 96elephants.org and join more than a million people dedicated to saving Africa's elephants. Protect their home. Take action at 96elephants.org. Life doesn't come with a financial roadmap. It does come with a lot of bumps and red lights. Steering clear of those doesn't have to be difficult. With First Source Bank's online money management tools, you can see all your financial accounts, balances, and transactions in one place. So you can easily set monthly budgets to help manage expenses and debt. Get the green light to a successful financial future with First Source's money management tools. First Source Bank. Where better is better. Member FDIC. Join the gang at O'Rourke's Public House, located in Eddy Street Commons, directly across the street from the Notre Dame campus. With an extensive selection of menu items, they're sure you'll find something to your liking. Experience dining at one of the five different Irish-themed areas overlooking Notre Dame's beautiful campus. Whether you're catching up with an old friend, having a meeting, or enjoying dinner with your family, O'Rourke's is the place to be. Visit them online at O'Rourke'sPublicHouse.com. Cheers to the Irish from O'Rourke's, the official home of the Muffet McGraw Radio Show. We're talking Notre Dame women's basketball. It's the Muffet McGraw Show on Pulse FM. Welcome back to O'Rourke's Public House. And we're playing trivia tonight. I think everybody's got three or four answers so far. And we're going to have another question coming up in just a little bit. Chance to turn our attention now to a couple more of our players. We have an outstanding sophomore with us and Daniel Patterson, who uh, has had a tremendous uh, impact on the Irish. And I think the MVP in that first game in Italy, no question about it. She was ready to play. And that was a lot of fun. Also joining us, uh, freshman Jordan Nixon from the great state of New York. And uh, Coach, uh, it's amazing the contribution these two ladies have given us. And uh, both have uh, been uh, whacked by that injury bug a little bit. But uh, the great news is they're Jordan's back, and Danielle will be back soon, and uh, that's uh, a lot different than a year ago. Yeah, it is. It is. We're so happy to have Jordan back. I mean, she missed a lot of games, and with Marina out at the same time, boy, was that, that was difficult, but uh, great to have her back. What's it been like um, coming in? The transition is not always easy. No, not at all, actually. Um, I've just learned to take things one day at a time. Well, one moment at a time. Um, there's just so much to do, uh, so many expectations, high expectations, um, just – having to you know, stay on task and just not to let my confidence waver at any point because um, it is a learning curve and there's just a lot to do and think about, like I said. So it's been tough, but I like a challenge. You, and you are really well prepared for the challenge. I think you're a great student of the game. I've seen you taking notes uh, while you were out on the sideline. What were some of the other things you were doing while you were watching? I mean, just trying to take it all in. 
Um, I'm always trying to eavesdrop on conversations you're having with <laughs> other players just to see if I could learn something, pick up something new that'll maybe help me. Um, so yeah, it's just about learning at all times. Danny, you came back this year a much more confident player, ready to go. Mm -hmm. What'd you do all summer to prepare yourself? Um, I really just went back to the drawing board. You know, I really uh, just looked at what I was good at and what I needed to get better at, kind of made a list of them. Um, and the attributes that I thought I was pretty good at, I tried to enhance those. And then the ones that I wasn't so good at, I, you know, I just kind of went back to square one and said, this is what I need to work on. Um, and I, I had a lot of people behind me, you know, just talking to me and telling me, you know, what I needed to do, and I listened. It's a good idea. Listening is a great <laughs> idea, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah. Danielle, one of the things uh, about your, uh, your size and your quickness gives you an ability to do a lot of things for us. And uh, I love what you do on, on defense because sometimes you can match up against a 5'10 or 5'11 player, and all of a sudden they're looking up and there's a big arm in front of them, which is nice. And then uh, you're also able to go inside. You can play inside or you can uh, shoot the ball a little bit. And you, Again, your confidence is shown, but you, you bring a, a wide array of talent to the team. Thank you. I mean, it's just uh, something that I've just been practicing, something that I'm getting more used to. Um, just I feel a lot more confident within our offense and uh, within our defense. I know that's just something big that, you know, we've been working on. So just trying to do everything that I can to help this team. Love what you're doing at the high post. I think you're going to be a great high post player. We talked about that. Um, replacing Catherine Westbound has been a lot harder than we thought. Um, <laughs> I know the coaches knew that it was going to be tough, but I think m we miss that high post glue. We miss that person to take the charge, and Danny's been taking charges at practice getting a little beat up because of it. Um, and, and now you've been sidelined with an injury. You've, yeah. you've uh, had a little bit of bad luck. What's it like sitting on the sideline? You know, it's actually um, a different perspective. I, I try to, you know, look at it the best way I can because I get to hear a few more things and see things that you don't usually see on the court. Um, so I think just trying to really uh, come back and have a different perspective on the game, I think that's going to help me uh, down the line. But, you know, you always want to be out there with your team. So I'm trying to get back as fast as possible. It's amazing when you come out of high school and uh, being 6'2", you're able to do a lot of things. And you get here and there's a lot of other players that are 6'2", and 6'4", yeah. and you gotta, you got to make that adjustment. Um, one of the questions that people asked me after the DePaul game, they said, who do you think gave the injury to Jordan Nixon? And I said, well, we're not sure. And somebody said, I think it was Abby Prohaska because she got to start out in Vancouver, but I don't think it was Abby. Uh, when you get uh, a situation like that, and you probably the last uh, quarter of the game, I think you were struggling a little bit at DePaul. Uh, and our medical staff, Ann Marquez, everybody does a great job and uh, wanted to make sure you're 100%. And uh, it, was a, it was a battle. It's a different situation, isn't it? For sure. Um, I mean, it's just tough. You, pr you pretty much summed it up. Uh, I just got to – I don't even know how to respond, <laughs> 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 honestly. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's you had to be That's patient. Awesome. I know when we were in Vancouver, sure. you wanted to get out there in the worst way, and uh, you're, just, you're just not ready. Um, when you, by the way, we have two ladies here from New York City, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great thing because we uh, not only uh, – well, we actually have three players from New York, don't we? Mm -hmm. So it's been a pretty good recruiting place for us. We've played some games in New York. We've got one coming up, uh, I think, at a place called Syracuse this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, glad to have New York girls with us. Uh, Jordan, talk about your, uh, your high school career and – what you thought uh, was the reason that Coach McGraw and the staff was really interested in bringing you here? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> okay, well, my first two years of high school were spent at a, a an Ivy League preparatory school in the Bronx. And after my sophomore year, well, I'd been there since middle school, but after sophomore year, I was like, I need a change. I needed a balance uh, between basketball and school and uh, I found that the Mary Lewis Academy this answers the, our you know trivia question hey you know um, whoops <laughs> oh was I I'm <laughs> sorry spoiler alert yeah, my bad <laughs> little freebie <laughs> I see a lot of erasers out there right now <laughs> yeah um so going in I mean I didn't know much about Mary Lewis but I did know that Daniel Patterson was there and I pretty much just took a chance and um it ended up well for me I was able to compete all year and that was something new to me just because of uh, kind of the lack of talent um, in the league that I had come from. And, I mean, I think that just helped me across the board. And my junior summer, so my last year of AAU, um, I didn't know what to expect. I kind of had my idea of, like, you know, the schools that were recruiting me and who I liked. And I'm just so blessed to have, you know, had the opportunity or for – this amazing coaching staff to notice something in me. So what a great AAU experience you had, though. I think you were champs. You didn't. I don't think you lost a game. Didn't we you win every tournament? Uh, two games. Two games out of the whole summer. So I want to say it was probably like 
32 and 2. Um, so it was a really successful summer, and uh, my AAU coach is always, he always expresses ambivalence, like, when we were out there on the floor, like, I don't know what I'm going to get from you guys just because of all of the adversity that we battled. Um, but in the end, it really turned out to be a great summer, a great experience. Um, I learned a lot, and I just wish. Yeah. And as the point guard, you got to boss Danny around in high school. <laughs> oh yeah, so now you're <laughs> continuing. That's the best part. <laughs> 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 Jordan, what do you want to hope to uh, get your degree in at Notre Dame? I know you're in a freshman year of studies, which is a, a broad base. gives you a good opportunity to look at a lot of things. Uh, have you decided yet? Um, I, right now, uh, I'm, in a, I'm in the College of Sciences, and biology is my focus. Um, initially, I wanted to be a veterinarian. But then, well, for me, I do a lot of uh, research just when I'm interested in something. And I started watching all these videos, like Day in the Life of a Veterinarian, and I was like, okay, this is not something I want to <laughs> do. This, this is just not me. So now I, I was a little more patient with myself and just trying to figure out what I enjoyed and what kind of got me going. And over time, I realized that I really do like the human performance aspect of things. So I hope to train professional athletes. I hope to be one myself, but um, I mean, I think it's important, like self-sufficiency, um, but I just... I really like that idea. Um, so biology seemed like the best, best path to take. I'm Great. glad you were patient. Wait until first semester freshman year to decide what you're <laughs> going to do with the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> Danielle, what, uh, what's ahead for you? Um, I'm really interested in broadcast media. So I'm in um, film, uh, film, television, and theater right now with a concentration in television. So I'm really enjoying that. And you're really Maybe busy you guys too, right? like to switch seats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. Well, we've, uh, we've, had, uh, we've had some of our players sit in and uh, – Last year, Brianna Turner sat in and did color with me on the Boston College game. And uh, I think when she put the headphones down, she was pretty head, pretty glad to be putting them down uh, <laughs> so she could get back to the <laughs> post. And well, you only told her she could only say, you're right, Bob. That's right. So <laughs> so <laughs> she's probably doing color with Bob. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you worked some football games? Yeah, I did. I had the chance to, you know, work some football games at the beginning of the season, do uh, some pregame shows for them. So that was just really exciting, um, getting to kind of, you know, step uh, out of my realm and do something a little bit different. Um, that was just a really great experience, and I think Notre Dame just gives such a great platform for things like that, even with our new student center. So We were so fortunate to have let China Robinson come out and talk to the team. Yeah. What did you learn from her? Um, I really just learned just a, a few techniques here and there. We actually sat down and watched some film together on um, things that I did right and things that I did wrong, things I can improve on. So, I mean, it was just really great and was a great experience to be able to sit and listen to her and watch what she does and the input she had. I think that's one of the great things uh, – in any field, and I know in broadcasting, there were people that I admired growing up, and uh, I still do my notes the way I do because of what Lloyd Pettit, the former voice of the Chicago Blackhawks, taught me when I was uh, a freshman in college. So it's amazing how many people in the broadcast industry and in every industry want to help younger people that are, are interested in that. Really uh, proud of what you're doing, too, by the way, because a lot of times you know, people that want to get into that sit around until their senior year and maybe I'd like to try something, but uh, you're involved in it and doing a great job. Thank you so much. We've gotten to meet a couple of people at practice, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Come out, and mm -hmm. it's great to have uh, some yeah. really, really big names come by practice and talk to it. a lot of women. Hannah Storm, somebody that's that's been out, and, uh, yeah, we've had a few come by. Yeah, people from Notre Dame have done well, and we've done well with these two young ladies here. We're going to take a break uh, coming up in just a moment. We've got one more uh, question to pass along to you. Now that you cheated and found out what <laughs> high school... <laughs> <laughs> that these uh, ladies attended. Here's our next question. This is question number five, and again, we have a tiebreaker if we need it. Daniel Patterson came in off the bench and scored a career-high 14 points against which team this season? Came off the bench, scored 14 points against this team this season. That's question number five. So write down the answer. We'll be checking on, uh, on your scores here in a, just a moment. When we come back, Coach McGraw is going to continue with our visit with our players tonight. And we're glad you're with us here at O'Rourke's Public House. Your boat, motorcycle, or personal possessions, a West Bend home and highway policy, We'll cover it all with one agent, one policy, and one bill. Not to mention one deductible. And if you don't file a claim all year, we'll give you some of your money back. Even your wallet can have a silver lining. To find out more, go to thesilverlining.com. You know, we don't always think about it, but healing 
is a huge issue. No wonder about three quarters of Jesus' miracles in the Bible are healings. Healing shows the kingdom is here and it's coming. God is restoring the world. So that's what Cure International does. Cure has hospitals in some of the most difficult places around the world to heal kids with correctable disabilities. And each hospital is like an outpost from another kingdom. Surgeons like Dr. Rick love being part of it. These hospitals do feel a very different place. A Cure Hospital, every patient is prayed for on the ward. No operation started without prayer. There's a sense of actually laying this procedure, this, this time, these few hours, which are really, really very important in a child's life, and putting at the feet of Jesus to be able to say, actually, please bless this operation. Bless the work that we're doing here today. So I'm not a doctor like Rick, but this is something we can all have a role in. Want to be part of it too? I think you'll love seeing what God is doing in the world. It's beautiful. Check it out, cure.org. We know you like football, so do we. We're TireRack.com, and this is our version of a two-minute drill, except it's only 30 seconds. TireRack.com has an enormous selection of tires. Not sure which ones to buy? Use our tire decision guide to find the right tires for your vehicle and the way you drive. Then get them shipped fast and free on all orders over $50. Shipping is in as little as one day, free. TireRack.com ships to independent, recommended installers. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Touchdown! It's the Muffet McGraw Show with your host, Bob Nagel, on Pulse FM. Trees and everything up there. And we're glad you're with us for the Muffet McGraw Show. We're, yeah, we're introducing a new segment tonight, and this is called the Women's Roundtable. This is a round table. <laughs> These are women. But we really thought it would be great if Coach McGraw got a chance just to visit with our players who are on the show and uh, get a little bit more insight about uh, what they're doing here on campus with the team and, uh, and what's ahead for all of them. So uh, with that, we'll throw it to Coach McGraw and take her away, Coach. All righty, I'm ready. Thanks for the questions for everybody listening live on Facebook. I know my sister must have asked at least three, four questions. But what are the ones I think that people are really interested in from you guys uh, as walk-ons at the – on the bench during the game, watching the lead grow a little bit. Like, what's that feeling like when you when you get called and you run up to the scorer's table? I know for me in the past, there's been definitely a little bit of nerves that have gone into that moment. But um, one thing that's probably the greatest thing about it is hearing all the cheers from the fans when we get called. It's something, it's just something unlike I've ever felt or heard before. And hearing uh, those cheers is a really awesome experience. Yeah, the support from the fans is always awesome. Um, and it always is fun because when we do get to go in, usually it means we're like, you know, we're winning. It's a decisive victory, and that's always a great feeling, too. Um, and always just, like, how supportive the bench is when we do go in. Just it makes us feel really, like, supported. And um, just it's a great opportunity to get out there, and we really, really enjoy it. <laughs> and trying to get that first shot off is something yeah. that you really want to get done pretty quickly. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it's always fun to have the bench, like, cheering us on, telling us, you know, go, go in there and get a bucket, you guys. You guys <laughs> got this. So we appreciate it a lot. Good. Well, we've got some uh, some questions that I'm going to turn over to you guys. So, what do you think, zone or man to man? What do you what do you think we're going to do more of this year? Uh, definitely man, for sure. I mean, our zone is pretty tough, um, but I think a man for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely, I think it depends on you know the team that we're playing, but I think our zone is pretty sufficient right now, and I think that we can um, play a little bit more man this year. Yeah, I, I was hoping we could. Um, I'm, I'm not real happy with our man-to-man -man defense right now. I think our zone defense needs a lot of work, too, though. So they're, uh, I guess they're equally bad right now, um, <laughs> or equally good. I'm not sure which way to look at that. Uh, I think we can get a lot better. I think zone was uh, great for us last year. Of course, we didn't have an, a lot of people. We didn't have a lot of subs, so we had to play a lot more zone. I would like to press a little bit more. We've been working on it, worked on it a little bit in the last game without a lot of uh, success, I would say. But we, uh, we really need to, to get some, some more looks defensively I think trying to change the rhythm of the offense so teams coming down against man every every single possession they're going to get used to it so I want to throw in some different things try to break the rhythm try to try to get them out of the flow a little bit and uh, see if we can change things up and I think we were really successful against Iowa doing that you know bringing just a little bit of pressure at times so hopefully we'll be able to play a little bit more of both um, but uh, we're going to get to know the girls a little bit more right <laughs> now so we're going to have a lightning round well, we'll start with a, a question that will give you a little bit. Favorite movie? Ooh. Quick. Rocky IV. Uh, I don't really have one. I just I like a lot of movies. Next. <laughs> I think i got to say Rudy. Uh, the Dark Knight. 
<laughs> Whoa, a little Batman. I like it. Okay, yeah. that's good. Uh, favorite thing to binge watch? I don't know. I'll go. The <laughs> Office. The oh, o- Office, Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. Uh, the French Prince Bel Air. Grace and Frankie. Good. Okay. <laughs> good, <laughs> good stuff. Favorite part of game day? Uh, probably our pregame huddle um, when we throw on a song and just kind of vibe out to that. <laughs> Saying the prayer for the team. Danny's the team chaplain when our chaplain <laughs> can't make it, and <laughs> she's our team chaplain on the road. <laughs> Does a great job getting us ready. The high fives all around every teammate, but right when we break the huddle before everybody goes out there. Pre-game meal. <laughs> 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 she looks like she's not enjoyed a pre-game meal <laughs> in a while. Uh, I hate game day, actually. It's my least favorite day. My favorite part of game day is after the game, <laughs> <laughs> if we've won. <laughs> and Matt's favorite part of the game day is only if we've won. <laughs> <laughs> Best advice you ever received? Um, figure it out. Don't stop regardless of um, any adversity. Good. Everything happens for a reason. This one's kind of different, but if you're happy, be. Be. (laughs) Be. (laughs) Favorite thing to do when you're not playing basketball? I can't say studying. (laughs) Well, I'm never going (laughs) to say that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, Probably just spending time with family. Spending time with my friends. Yeah, hanging out with family and friends. Spending time with my friends and family. Wow. Um, I'm I'm not going to go I don't think anybody will know what your favorite song is um, (laughs) so we're going to move along from that one but uh, (laughs) if you could only eat one thing the rest of your life (gasps) Butler you'd like to eat what would it be? Uh, um, Nachos Turkey sandwiches Wow Pizza (laughs) Yeah Yikes Um, Sweet potato fries Oh, they have some really <laughs> good sweet potato fries here at I O'Rourke's. Know. <laughs> yeah. Beth Cunningham, biggest eater on the staff. Well, I thought it was just because she was pregnant all those years. <laughs> but really, she is the biggest eater <laughs> ever. Dream job. Can't play basketball. Dream job. Careers. Training professional athletes. Um, being a broadcaster. Something where you can combine sports and science. I want to work in finance. I've got my dream job, so <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions from the studio audience here, and uh, we're just going to have time to pick one. How surprised would you be? No, I'm not going to say that one. I noticed that, no, Bob Nagel. Um, no. How do you push your team to come out of their comfort zone? I don't know. Oh, figure it out. Figure it out, yeah, that's... <laughs> There's always something new um, in practice, in games. <laughs> figure it out. Let's see who get, you know, let's see what happens. How many hours per week do you think we practice? Uh, I'd probably say probably close to maybe 16 hours a week, I'd probably say. It's maybe a little less than that. Good answer. The NCAA allows us 20. Mm-hmm. So we, uh, we try to stay within that, mm-hmm. in those range. It only counts as practice, so uh, the training room and other things don't count that much anymore. But okay, we're ready for the lightning round. How much time we got left? How are we doing? A couple minutes? Okay. Bob's getting anxious over there. <laughs> he doesn't trust me up here. Thinks I'm going to take over the Muffet McGraw show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? I'll just do you two first. Okay. Lightning round. You got to be quick. All right. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Coke. Cardio or weights? Well, cardio. 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 <laughs> Mac or PC? Mac. Mac. Thought that was about macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Night owl. Ooh, one-on-one on one or three-on-three? One-on-one. On one. Travel the world or travel the country? Travel, travel the world. world. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Oh, pancakes. <laughs> Passenger or driver? Driver. Passenger. You have your license? Yes. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean or mountains? Mountains. Ocean. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Skiing. Not allowed to do either. That was a, <laughs> that was a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Call or text? Text. Text. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Netflix. TV show or movie? Movie. TV show. Music or podcast? Music. Podcast. Cats or dogs? Cats. Dogs. Winter or summer? Summer. summer. Sneakers or sandals? Sneakers. Sneakers. Orange juice or apple juice? Apple juice. Apple juice. Peanut butter or jelly? Peanut, Peanut butter. butter. Introvert or extrovert? Introvert. Introvert. Nice. <laughs> e- excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that you know the answers. <laughs> yeah. Hamburger or hot dog? Hamburger. Hamburger. Cake or pie? Cake. Cake. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke. Cardio or weights? Cardio. 
Mac or PC? Mac. Mac. Early bird or night owl? Early night bird. Owl. <laughs> <laughs> one on one or three on three? Three, three on three. three. Travel the world or the country? World. world. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Pancakes. Passenger or driver? Driver. Driver. Ocean or mountain? Ocean. Ocean. Well, coming from California, you, had, you kind of had, had to, to say, say that, that <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> Skiing or snowboarding? Skiing. Neither. Right, trick, question. Good. trick question. Good. Trick question. Trick question. Low nose. Call or text? Text. Uh, call. That's a lie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the quality of it. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. Hulu. Ooh. What do you watch on Hulu? Uh, Seinfeld. Um, Jeopardy. Jeopardy, yes. <laughs> Three years worth yep. of Jeopardy on there. <laughs> a lot of episodes. TV show or movie? TV show. TV show. Music or podcast? Music. Cats or dogs? Dogs. dogs. Winter or summer? summer? Summer. Sneaker or sandal? Sneakers. Sandal. Orange juice, apple juice? Orange, Orange juice. juice. Peanut butter? Peanut butter. Or jelly? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. <laughs> leading, the, leading the witness. Introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Extrovert. <laughs> Introvert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome job, girls. Very nice. <laughs> Coach, Bob, nice. Ready to have you back? Yeah, nice job. Um, nice segment there, the uh, the women's roundtable. We're going to have to keep that up. I think that was a lot of fun. And uh, we did uh, wind up, by the way, with a tie in our trivia contest. Oh. So we have a tiebreaker. Did anyone get Mary Lewis Academy wrong? Yeah, anybody, yeah Mary Lewis <laughs> Academy. You had to spell that the right way. No, you didn't. Um, so our, uh, our judges are out there in the field with the two teams that tied. And we have a tie-breaking question for you. Uh -oh. And so, and you can get as close as you can on this one. Again, don't look it up. That's cheating. But uh, the final question is, Skylar Diggins is our all-time leading scorer at Notre Dame. How many points did she score in her career? If you've got that number or get close to it, you're going to be a winner of our prizes tonight. We're going to get to that in just a second. We've got another segment with Coach McGraw coming up. You're listening to the Muffet McGraw Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House, brought to you by thetireact.com. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Brant, and this just makes sense. Let's say you've got credit card debt, maybe on multiple cards, you're not able to pay it off right now, but you want to be debt-free. Well, call Trinity Debt Management. This is exactly what they're great at. I'll give you the phone number in a bit, but just so you know, this isn't a gimmick. They're a nonprofit that specializes in this. They get you set up with a single monthly payment that's less than what you might expect because they're able to get you a break on the interest you're paying so it's honorable, you're paying your debt, but it costs substantially less. You save a lot of money. The great thing, too, when you call, you talk to a certified credit counselor, you're not alone in this. It happens to a lot of people, and the end result here is being debt-free, and that is such a beautiful thing. So get help. They are so good at this. Trinity Debt Management, this is what they do. 800-750-9643. 800-750-9643. Eight hundred seven five zero ninety six forty three. We know you like football, so do we. We're TireRack.com, and this is our version of a two-minute drill, except it's only thirty seconds. TireRack.com has an enormous selection of tires. Not sure which ones to buy? Use our tire decision guide to find the right tires for your vehicle and the way you drive. Then get them shipped fast and free on all orders over fifty dollars. Shipping is in as little as one day, free. TireRack.com ships to independent, recommended installers. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Touchdown! Pulse FM presents Sports Yak, a podcast featuring Corey Mann and Chuck Freebie yakking about sports and faith. I thought Derrick Rose was Jalen Rose, and Jalen Rose was Derrick Rose. No wonder I say these people have no clue at all. What in the world? Download, listen, or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and don't miss an episode of The Yak, brought to you by Big and Tall Outlet of Elkhart, or online at BigandTallOutlet.com, because big guys got to look good, too. It's either my way or, or adios, amigos. This is Muffet McGraw. Thanks for following the Irish on Pulse FM. Notre Dame women's basketball, exclusively on Pulse FM. Welcome back to the Muffet McGraw Show. Our second show of the season. Our next show is coming your way on January 7th. We'll be here uh, after we get back. I think we have a road trip to Georgia Tech on the 6th. So one game at a time, Bob. I'm sorry, one game at a time. Good, good point, Coach. Hey, we do have a winner in our trivia contest. And... Uh, Coach, uh, we're going to let you do the announcement, but right, right away we're going to give you all the answers to the questions for those listening on uh, Pulse FM or watching on Facebook or Facebook, uh, UND.com, all those uh, places where you can watch. How many career wins does Coach McGraw have? The answer was Damn. 897. Not bad for a lady in her fourth year. <laughs> 40s. Uh, 40s. 
Arike just crossed the 2,000 career point mark. How many players have done that? She is the fifth. And uh, we were going to ask you to name them, but uh, a little bit easier for some of us. But, yeah. uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, Beth Morgan, you mentioned uh, she was our first one. And Skylar Diggins, the all-time leading scorer. Katrina Gaither had a great career at Notre Dame. Two players together on that team with 2,000. Yeah. And uh, some girl named Ruth, Ruth Riley, Riley was yeah. pretty good. And now Arike Ogombawali. So just a, a tremendous group. Uh, both Danielle Patterson and Jordan Nixon were teammates together at Mary Lewis Academy in New York. True or false, Maureen Butler was manager with the softball team before joining the women's hoops team. The answer is true. She did do that and uh, can take a fastball deep if she gets a chance. <laughs> Danielle Patterson came off the bench and scored a career-high 14 points against which team? That was DePaul, and that was a great performance. Uh, and then our tiebreaker, how many points does Skylar Diggins-Smith have all time? 2,357 was the correct answer, and the winning team got it exactly right. And uh, so, Coach, who's our winner tonight? Tonight's winner are our vivacious volunteers. Not dressed in orange from Tennessee, but Linda, Jewel, Phyllis, Cheryl, and Rose. Congratulations, ladies, and thanks for all your support. Outstanding. Hey, that was fun. We get, we'll do that again. We'll play trivia next time on uh, January 7th. Coach, we've got to look at the schedule coming up. And uh, next up for the Fighting Irish, Western Kentucky, a team that had won three straight. They did uh, suffer a loss over the weekend. They played well at Vancouver, and uh, they uh, also played Iowa as well. So we're kind of familiar. They, uh, they gave Oregon State a great game in Vancouver. We got to see a little bit of that, uh, a team that really took us pretty pretty far to about a minute left in the game last year down there. Uh, so we're, we'll be expecting a battle this year. They got a new coach, but uh, expecting good things from them. And then off to Marquette. We've got another bus trip coming. Who's going on a bus trip? Woohoo! Tell you what, I, I got to tell you, the, the first bus trip we took up to DePaul, when those people up there saw all these busloads of green shirts coming in, they go, who are those people? <laughs> That's our fans. It was great. And uh, we're going to have buses going up to Marquette as well. And uh, we're familiar with Marquette. We played them back in the uh, Big East days. And they've got a good program. They're ranked They've got 19th. a great program. They, are, uh, uh, they probably should be ranked a little bit higher. They had, it was a one-point game with Mississippi State. Um, they were down three with eight seconds left in the game at Mississippi State, so that's that's a great game for them. Uh, everybody back from the team, that remember last year we took them into overtime, so we were lucky to win that game. So uh, they've uh, they've got a tremendous team. Playing them at home is going to be tough. Need to mention that we had the Elkhart Central Marching Band with us in our game against Binghamton, and I know the Lehigh game will have the Mishawaka Marching Band. Uh, I'm not is Katie here? I'm not sure who's going to be. We got another volunteer band coming for. Um, Western Kentucky? We do. Oh, okay. But you know what? We should have a band face-off or something. We've got some great high school bands in this area. It is so fun to have them out here. And they love coming here and love seeing the reaction again with all the fans that we have. It's good to have them be a part of that. And so many exciting things go on during the holidays. Our cheerleaders, our band are off uh, as the students are off. So uh, it's good to see those people uh, uh, chime in. It'll be good to have those people around for the holidays. Yeah, and great for our fans. Have The teddy bear toss was a huge success. Uh, we've had the canned food drives for the food bank, so we're we're uh, doing a lot of good things in the community, too. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we did have somebody call in with a correction about the biggest eater. <laughs> Beth Cunningham <laughs> called in and said it's Bob Nagel. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's all good. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we, uh, again, we'll be back uh, with our next show on January 7th, and as we wrap up, uh, Coach, we're wrapping up 2018 as well. It's such an unbelievable, unforgettable year as we think back. Yeah, really. It, it, there's so much to be thankful for uh, going back to that championship game and, and that amazing weekend we had and, and what a fun summer it was celebrating it and, and putting it behind us now and moving on. New year, turning the page and getting ready for this season. I, I think this team's got a lot of potential. We've got a lot of talent. If we can continue to play together like we did in the last game, I think we've got great things in store for us. All righty. And, again, it's uh, Wednesday night. we got Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers, coming in. And Don't uh, wear red, though. Don't wear red. red. So yeah. let's stick with the green. So Well, it's our favorite color anyway. <laughs> and uh, Santa Claus is going to be on hand, I understand, uh, down the, the, fan, uh, the fan interaction area. So I want to say a special thanks to our, uh, our engineer on site, and that's Bob Henning. does a great job for us uh, each and every show. Our studio engineer, Matt Thibodeau, Aaron Poling, Mark Cridgen is our Pulse FM engineer. Our thanks to Katie Caps, Josh Bates, Greg Hughes, Rob Kelly, all the folks 
who did so much work putting the show together, and uh, we appreciate all of them that are here with us tonight. And again, uh, congratulations to the Vivacious Volunteers. They'll be signing autographs here in just a little <laughs> bit. So we're glad you're with us. Happy we'll holidays, see you in January. Everybody. Yeah, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. You too. All right. Thanks for being with us on the Muffle McGraw Show from O'Rourke's Public House. Thanks for listening to the Muffet McGraw Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons, with Hall of Fame Notre Dame women's basketball coach Muffet McGraw. Brought to us by Tire Rack, First Source Bank, and O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons. Put up the shot, it's on. Oh! Notre Dame is national champion! This is your home for Notre Dame women's basketball. Positive hits, Pulse FM.